yeah, I hope you're all having a very nice Thursday. I thought it'd be really fun if we just talked about Christmas and we brainstormed a little bit using different tools in Tangent just to generate some different ideas for digital products, for books, t-shirts, on-demand products, custom products, and just whatever we think of. Maybe we can find some new niches, some new ideas, and some new things for products. Okay, so hopefully you should see Tangent in front of you. You should see the homepage for Tangent. Yeah, and what I was saying is that I think there's still time to put together digital products. So by digital products, I mean t-shirts for merch, Redbubble, wherever, Zazzle, hoodies, anything that you can put on print and on-demand sites. I'm also thinking Christmas cards and gift wrap. Gift wrap is a huge thing. The spoon flower, I believe you can make gift wrap on spoon flower, on stationery HQ. I think you can do cards through stationery HQ. You can also do cards, I think, through Vistaprint now as well. So lots of places you can do Christmas cards, tags, and gift wrap, things like that. That like People overlook those because you always think, okay, we need a lot of toys. Everyone's going to buy toys for Christmas. But people buy so much gift wrap. Like I, I always sell loads of gift wrap at, on, at holidays and I find it does so well. That's something to be worth thinking about. We've still got time for digital products. So where do we start with Tangent? And I think that's a question that quite a few people have asked. Like, okay, there's a lot in this. Where do I start? And I think there's two good places to start in Tangent. One is the niche machine because you can just browse different niches and the other is tangent words. Now, those of you who have used Blue Sky Suite and Sky Words, you will recognize tangent words. It works in a very, very similar way, but it's a little bit more advanced. So we're going to put Christmas into tangent words and it comes up with a whole bunch of keyword suggestions. So the way this works it's looking at various marketplaces. It looks at Amazon, a bunch of other marketplaces to assess what are the most searched phrases that begin with Christmas. So you're really getting a lot of product suggestions, keyword suggestions from various marketplaces. We do weight it towards Amazon, but this isn't just Amazon results because we found that it actually gives you a lot more choice and it's a lot more interesting when we bring in suggestions from other marketplaces too. We don't include keyword search volume. And the reason we don't do that is because Amazon does not give out that data. I know like Merchant Words supposedly gives you keyword search data. It's not Amazon search volume data. Like that just isn't available. What they're really doing is they're doing some kind of algorithm. I strongly suspect they're doing, <laughs> don't sue me Merchant Words, but I strongly suspect what they're actually doing is some kind of algorithm around Google search volume. So I don't put that, or we don't put that information into Tangent because I think it's kind of dishonest to include information or data that isn't really real. So instead, what I would recommend, and this is really clever, if you're using Tangent, first of all, you have all the keyword suggestions here and we color code them by popularity. So you can really get a good feel for what are the most popular Christmas products, Christmas lights, decorations, ornaments, Christmas in July, Christmas tree, Christmas cards, Christmas village, Christmas cactus, apparently that's a big thing. Christmas vacation and so on. You can really, and if you go down a little bit, if you sort of scroll down a bit, you can get more slightly obscure suggestions and interesting suggestions like Christmas rabbit, Christmas songs, Christmas jewelry, Christmas tree shop, like lots, lots of things there. But this is something you can do if you want search volumes. And I like this because this is kind of legit. So what you can do is you can click to data view and that gives you all these keyword suggestions. And I just copy them all. So I just copy, I'm not going to do that weird one at the end. I don't know what that is, but I'm just going to copy them all. And I have an extension called Keywords Everywhere, which is free. It's totally free. And what I do is I uh, open up Keywords Everywhere and I paste all those keywords in there. Sometimes you have to do it twice. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it pauses in processing and makes you do it again. There it is. Okay, so Keywords Everywhere actually gives you the legitimate search volume. So I really like this because this gives you Google information. So as I say, Amazon search volume is not available 
but Google search volume is. And this is monthly search volume from Google. Keywords Everywhere is getting legitimate data. The reason I say that is because I've tested it against Google myself several times. Google no longer give out search volume to small sellers. They only give it to, out to people who spend a lot of money on their advertising. And Keywords Everywhere have been using that to get this data. So it's really good data, but it is Google. I do find on the whole that Google does translate pretty well to Amazon search volume. I think it's probably the most accurate data that you can get. So what I did there, I just used I put Christmas into tangent words and got this whole list of Christmas ideas. Then I switched to data view and I just copied and pasted all this data into keywords everywhere. And now I have the search volume so I can really see what are the most popular searches, what people are really, really looking for around Christmas time. So Christmas cards, Christmas jumpers, big, big things, carols, Christmas music, cookies, so on. So you can really go through that if you want search volumes and this is a great place to check your keywords if you're not sure whether you want to use a particular keyword or which keywords you should be using and this is good especially if you're limited on space like in create space you only have a few keywords you can use so you can actually test those with keywords everywhere to see what volume they have and how popular those searches are so what we were doing here we, we started off with tangent words it gives you the, the suggested keywords and what it also does, it does some neat things. It gives you related words for Christmas. So it gives you sort of similar words and, and holidays that occur around that time. And it also does a little bit of word association for you. It tells you, okay, if you're not sure, you're like, I want to make a Christmas card, but I don't know what to put on it. It gives you ideas like Jesus, it's Jesus' birthday. What's Christmas about? It's Jesus' birthday. So you could put sort of happy birthday Jesus on a card. Like this kind of gives you an idea straight off the bat. What do you do at Christmas? You buy presents, you give gifts, you go on a sleighing ride. Christmas is a holiday, a Christian holiday, a commercialized holiday. It tells you some symbols of Christmas. What does Christmas make you want to do? Buy presents. Uh, it's defined as the birthday of baby Jesus. And you can see it's just giving you a whole, this is actually an artificial intelligence system. So in uh, Skywords, we used to call this Sky AI, but we actually added to it, improved it a little bit and put all this thesaurus and synonyms and all this other things in here. And I mean, for Christmas, this is kind of obvious, you know, most of these things, it does give you a few interesting ones like feast day or fate day. Sometimes this can give you some really cool ideas. If you do certain searches, it will come up with some really interesting AI suggestions, word associations and keywords. And it can also help you sort of think about your audience as well. Like it says, okay, target. I mean, obviously for, for uh, Christmas target Christians, like they kind of gives you that information. So we just did a basic search there for Christmas. So this could actually start us off in our journey for looking for products to make. So for example, we can see sort of Christmas cactus is like a really popular search. So we can actually click on this. And if we want to find out more about Christmas cactus, we can totally do that. Like, is it a plant? I don't know. Or is it just a decorated cactus? I don't really know what a Christmas cactus is. Oh, that's what it is. It's one of those flowers. Cool. So now I know what a Christmas cactus looks like and just by going into Tangent Explorer and going and, and browsing around. So that's pretty awesome. So we're going to revisit this soon, the Tangent Explorer. It does so many things. Like this is really your sort of lookup center for anything you want to find out. Like if you think, okay, a Christmas cactus is really pretty. I want to put it on a t-shirt. You can actually go to Amazon t-shirts and see whether there are already any t-shirts up with Christmas cactuses on. Not many, actually. I think we may have found a niche. There's, oh, there's some fun ones. These are cute. So there's a few, and a lot of them say Felice Navidad. Yeah, there's, there's a few Christmas cactus shirts, but they don't actually look like the flowers. So maybe like there's some f sort of flower and plant lovers out there that might enjoy actually putting a picture of a Christmas cactus on there. And if you think that's the case, you could actually just go back to Tangent, go to Public Domain, and maybe look on Pixabay and see if you can find pictures of, there you go, Public Domain pictures of Christmas cactus that you could put on your t-shirt or sort of maybe adapt from here to put on your t-shirt. So 
that's just sort of getting started using tangent words to sort of generate a few ideas. And you can, of course, work your whole, like you can just stay in tangent words and work your way through this to come up with some ideas, like Christmas hair accessories. Boom, there's a whole, I'm sure you can get customized hair accessories made. I bet Zazzle or Cafe Press or somewhere like that will do custom hair accessories for you like Christmas photo booth props. That's another one I wouldn't have thought of. And you could probably do those as printables as well and sell those as printable items. So something to maybe think about as a digital product. So the other place that I, I use as a starting place in Tangent is the niche machine. And the niche machine is just super awesome. It has 18,000 niches in it, 18,000 different niches and they are all organized by category. Now, we're talking about Christmas. The great thing with Christmas is that anything that people are obsessed with, they're gonna still be obsessed with it at Christmas. So if they're obsessed with octopuses, then at Christmas, you can get them octopus gifts, they just need Santa hats. Um, if people are obsessed with motorbikes, then I don't know, show them a picture of a motorbike with a big red ribbon on, or a motorbike driving out of a Christmas tree. Like you, can, you can take any niche and Christmas-ify it. And I think for t-shirts, that's actually a really, really good way to go. Like if you wanna make, I think when people say, okay, I wanna make a Christmas shirt, and it's just about Christmas, and it says, happy Christmas, those shirts are really, really hard to sell. And the reason is because there are so many shirts that just say happy Christmas. You really have to find your niche first and then Christmassy fire it. So make it a shirt about motorbikes or a shirt about octopuses, not a shirt specifically about Christmas. However, there are a lot of suggestions in the Christmas category in the niche machine for various, various Christmas niches. And not just Christmas either. We have Hanukkah niches in here. And it's funny because I've actually been boxing up some Hanukkah Christmas cards that I have from last year that I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a few bundles with this. So, okay, Hanukkah niches. Yeah, so this is really neat. I, I like, I thought about Yiddish. Like, that's a really interesting one. Like, has anyone done sort of Hanukkah shirts in, in Yiddish? Like, that's such a neat idea. So you can easily go to products and whatever you want to look up, you can go Merch by Amazon. Let's see if there are any Merch shirts about Yiddish. And yes, it looks like there are, but they're not very hanukkah -y. So you could sort of add a menorah or, or something like that and probably have something really unique there. There's about six pages, it looks like, of uh, Yiddish shirts, 188 shirts. But I'm pretty sure if you kind of made it a bit more seasonal, you might have a really popular shirt there. And if you want to check it, like if you want to go and check the keywords, we can go back to keywords everywhere where we were before. So I go back to bulk upload keywords and we can try, yeah, we can try Yiddish Hanukkah Yiddish shirt. And I know there are all kinds of spellings of Hanukkah as well. Actually, those didn't, Yiddish Hanukkah, I think I probably didn't spell it right. Yiddish shirt not showing much search volume. So I don't know, maybe that's not a good niche, but at least you can check it out and you can try it. And the great thing with doing t-shirts and on demand is that it doesn't really hurt to try anything. All you lose, the worst case scenario on merch, you lose a slot and on any other print on demand, I mean, it doesn't really cost you anything to give your idea a try. And sometimes you can just become the first person in a niche and do really, really well with it. There we go. We were looking at Hanukkah niches there. And actually, one thing we put in here, just to be helpful, we put the different spellings of Hanukkah in there because I know there are so many. So if you are making a product for Hanukkah, these are the spellings you should probably use in your keywords just so people can find your product. And this is the most common spelling there, Hanukkah with two Ks. So also what you've got in here, like if you're really sort of trying to brainstorm some ideas and you're stuck for like, what kind of product am I going to make for Christmas? Check out the international Christmases. This is like one of my favorite categories in here. And I think it gets super, super overlooked. Because here's the thing, there are so many people in the US 
who are expats from other countries. And they really, and, and I think at Christmas time, and I can sort of say this from my own experience, I think at Christmas time is when you really get sort of homesick for food. Like I want, I'm like, oh, I want mince pies and Christmas pudding and Christmas cake like my granny makes. And you know, you really kind of want food from your own country, especially at Christmas time. So I think international Christmas can be like a really overlooked niche. And this is kind of interesting. So the niche machine gives you an approximate Google search volume. And it is approximate. I, I don't recommend relying on this alone. The reason I say it's approximate, we pull it from Google. I do do some editing on it to make sure that it's picking up something legitimate. So for example, if we're looking at the dogs category and you see Greyhound at number one, it may be because it's picking up Greyhound bus. So what I'll do is I'll remove references to Greyhound bus so you get a more legitimate search volume so these aren't exact search volumes from Google but they are pretty like they will give you a good indication of popularity if you want to get a more exact search volume then copy them into keywords everywhere up here and and that will give you an exact search volume so I really like like Russian Christmas, how awesome is that? I want to know what, uh, like a, and I know there's a lot of political jokes around at the moment, but I'm sure, and I know Svetlana's in this group, and there's a lot of Russians that are here in, in the US that I'm sure would enjoy celebrating however a, a Russian Christmas looks like. Now, I don't know what a Russian Christmas involves, so I just clicked on it, and now we can go and, and find out all about it. So I can go to Wikipedia, please search for Russian Christmas in Wikipedia. Oh, there we go. Christmas in Russia. Okay, so I had to click a couple of times to get through to the right page. But here we go. Christmas in Russia. So there we go. It gives you a whole bunch of information about it. Finely sliced meat and pork cooked in pots with traditional porridge. Sweet dishes include berries, fruit, candy cakes, angel wings. Ooh. So like, this starts giving me sort of like ideas here for maybe I could do a recipe book. Like maybe you could do Russian Christmas recipes and you can get a lot of public domain recipes remember recipes the ingredients and the basic methods for making a recipe are public domain certain words may may not be public domain certain any type of expressive writing or creative writing isn't public domain but basic recipes just the ingredients and the methods a generally public domain. So you could put together a recipe book of like Russian Christmas. We can go back here and there's German Christmas. Like what, what does it, and now I, I kind of have a better idea of what a German Christmas looks like. And one thing I might like to do is sort of find some art and see if I can find some, whether there's any sort of public domain art around a German Christmas. So tangent, we can just simply go. I just went to Google public domain vector images to see if we can find any German Christmassy images. This, this is kind of cute, the little house here. So uh, I, I don't think that guy's a very good representative, but it does give you some uh, ideas there, some basic ideas. And I'm gonna show you how to do a better image search in a moment. But you can really, really browse around this. Also in here, we've got types of Christmas. So if you want to have a sort of alternative Christmas, this tells you how, pe how people are celebrating. There's Disney Christmas, New York Christmas, Sexy Christmas, Victorian Christmas, Country Christmas, Candy Christmas. Like if you're a bundler, this like is your place to be. Hawaiian Christmas, Gay Christmas, every single one of these sounds like a bundle to me. I think this is a great place to really start looking for ideas as well. So this is the niche machine. As I say, it's 18,000 niches. Like you can see this goes on forever. There's zombie Christmas, sugar-free Christmas, urban Christmas, gangster Christmas, lots and lots of ideas here. There's a holiday. Oh, we've got holiday traditions in here, a list of Christmas food. Like there is, there's so many different niches. You can just browse just to get some ideas. And I really recommend while you're browsing around, get a paper and pen because you can scribble down ideas and you can really, because you will get like mind blown as you go around the niche machine. Like here's something cool you can do. So like Krampus, I know Jordan 
he made a Krampus coloring book and Krampus keeps coming up because there's so many public domain images of Krampus and Krampus is like a creepy German evil Santa who goes around and kidnaps children for Christmas but like you can do fun things like in the tools in the tangent explorer we have things like the pun generator so if you want to make like a, a weird Krampus t-shirt and, and you've seen all the other Krampus t-shirts people are doing, you can look at pun generator. And I think this is hilarious. Like Krampus radio, like Krampus runs with campus. Oh, so you can be like Krampus life and you can have like Krampus sitting at, at a university or in a college. Like that would be a really fun sort of spin on things just to play with that pun. That, like Krampus sounds like, campus and pun generator gives you all kinds of weird and interesting like virtual krampus and krampus police like that would be pretty funny if you had a picture of like university campus police but instead of being like actual police they were like krampus coming out of a police car genius i think maybe people in colleges would would, would go for that it might make for a funny Christmas card. It might make for a really good Christmas card for a college or for like someone who, uh, who works at a college or a professor. So lots and lots of ideas just by clicking around the tools in the Tangent Explorer. And we've put a few extra things in the niche machine now. We have, these aren't so Christmassy, but they're pretty cool. So we have a random list. So it will pick you a list at random. There we go, it's just picked adjectives. So you could totally apply any of these to Christmas as well. Beauty asks, can you put the puns from the pun generator on a t-shirt as is? Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. The only reason you wouldn't is if they are trademarked, which is possible. Like I saw Apple Krampus there, which obviously would probably be a trademark of Apple. So I would avoid that. You can use the test check. If you haven't downloaded the test check, do because it's awesome. It's on my Gumroad at gumroad.com slash Catherine and it's free. And all it does is it checks USPTO for trademarks. So if you're making, and this is mainly a merch thing, like it, it's never good to infringe on trademarks, but merch are super, super strict on not using any trademarks at all. So I, it's always a good idea to check with USPTO whether things are trademarked. But yeah, I mean, the puns themselves, I mean, a pun isn't really copyrightable. You should be absolutely fine putting those on shirts. So let's, let's pull another random list and see what we get. Adjectives is a fun one. Um, the fun thing with adjectives, I actually put adjectives in here for t-shirt revolutionaries. Actually, I, I want to go back to it now. Let me see. It's in words and slogans. Let me, let, let's just talk about that for a moment because it's pretty cool. I put a list of adjectives in here. And the reason I did that is because if you have a, a shirt or you've got an idea for a shirt that says world's best mom, you can actually go through here and find some sort of interesting words or different words that you can put with it instead. So you can have like world's most bored mom, world's most perfect mom, world's most gorgeous mom. And this just gives you a whole bunch of adjectives that you can browse through. We also have positive words. So it has things like hot, sexy, supreme, ace, beautiful, tops, capital. So if you're just stuck for good words, like I am the coolest person ever, you can really come up with some great sort of different adjectives to use here. So lots and lots of ideas there. Let, yeah, let's pull another random list just, just so you can sort of see what this is doing. This is like if you're really just stuck for ideas, maybe you're looking at merch maybe you're looking at create space and you're like i don't know what to do i just i want to make a product i have no idea what to make you can pull a random list and browse like atlantis pompeii babylon like those are pretty cool subjects atlantis you might have problems with because i know there's like a big resort called atlantis but you can really sort of like dig into one of these ideas or one of these niches and see where it takes you. Like, I mean, you could go to like Bombay and you could go and sort of check out public domain content for that and see if you can find any cool pictures or we can do just Google public domain and see if you can find any cool pictures that inspire you. So this is like such a good creative tool. You can just go and sort of browse around and, oh, Bombay Sapphire. See, now it doesn't, the, the reason we called this tangent 
It's because it doesn't matter if you go on a tangent. If you're just trying to get ideas and you go, oh, Bombay, that sounds fun. And it takes you to Bombay Sapphire Gin. And then that inspires you to make a gin advent calendar or maybe a T-shirt with a gin advent calendar or a T-shirt with a grandma drinking gin. That's absolutely fine. You came up with an idea. You came up with a product and brilliant. So there's no rules about how to use this. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, then I must stick with the, the thing I was, I was looking at. You can go anywhere you like with these. And we've really tried to give you all the tools so you can explore. And just if you find a niche that's interesting you, that you can go deeper and deeper and really start to explore that. We put a few other fun things in the niche machine. Another of the things we put in for the t-shirt class is the character maker. And this just is hilarious. I love the character maker. This is 100% Isaac's brain. Like this, this whole thing just makes me laugh because it's basically Isaac. So it generates a character for you at random. So you have the friendly Mandarin. It's, it has an updo hairstyle. It has a negative space bulletproof vest, carries a tow ring, lives in salon, travels in a frigate. And its favorite genre is rom-com. And you can actually narrow these down. And this is great for t-shirts. In fact, this is great if you're trying to come up with a book or like an idea for a kid's book or an idea for a coloring book or a product. I mean, think how powerful emojis are. Like emojis have become a huge, huge thing. And they're really just characters. Like that's what it kind of comes down to. Grumpy Cat is a character. The Annoying Orange is a character. Like, think of the characters that sort of show up on t-shirts, like the little guy looking over a wall. Like, that's a famous character. The 7-Up guy with the, the hair. I don't know if that's a European thing. But they're all sort of characters that became iconic. And the great thing is, if you generate and create a character, that's intellectual property. That's something that you actually own. And you can franchise. There's like an expo. There is a world expo where you can license people to use your character. So characters shouldn't be overlooked. And I, I love putting characters on t-shirts. I do a lot of that. So we put a ways to narrow down your characters as well. So you can choose from animals, people, food. So if you want to do like Shopkins, you know, like Shopkins has sort of like food, food characters. You can just click food. The quaint panettone. That, see, that's a Christmas thing, though. Panettone is very Christmassy. So, I mean, that would be a great name for your private label as well, the quaint panettone. And then it gives you some fun sort of ideas about it if you want to sort of develop the character more. This makes more sense when you go to people. If you click on people, you can get some really funny character ideas for people. The cumbersome technician. So he has a mullet and he wears leopard print boxer shorts. I, like, I can see this guy already. Um, and he travels in the dog sled and he likes baseball, bouncy houses and clarinet. That, like, that's amazing. That's, like, I want to put that guy into a TV show right now. You can do pick again and it will generate another character for you. The funny landscape architect. He has layered hair and he wears mosaic breeches made of Gore-Tex. So you can really have fun with this and sort of use it, let it inspire you. And, let, and, and I think it's really important to be silly sometimes and play when you're coming up with ideas, especially for, for T-shirts and mugs and bumper stickers and coloring books. Like you need to allow yourself to play. If you're like super serious and say, hmm, well, I've got to analyze what the most popular designs are at the moment. And then you're always two steps behind the other guys. And those t-shirts, like those ships have, have sailed. You've got to find new shirt ideas or new mug ideas or new book ideas. And if you're sort of first of the crowd, you can start a trend. And what is cool about this is that if you come up with things like characters and funny ideas, witty ideas, out there ideas, that's the kind of stuff that will go viral. That's the, the kind of thing that will get you shared on Facebook. Like I, I'm, I'm thinking about Marika and she has her amazing, like it's not really a character, but she has a, her amazing dog, Incredible Stella. And Marika I know is in, in this group and she's put out a coloring book featuring Stella and like people love the character. And, and I know today she had a video out comparing <laughs> Stella. So Stella's a pit bull and it was comparing Stella's rear end with Kim Kardashian's rear end. And Stella was saying she wanted to be a Kardashian or she looked like a Kardashian. 
which was very funny. And it's sort of assigning that whole character to her. But the thing is, like Stella is getting so many shares and so much sort of viral interest because she's an amazing, I mean, she's real, she's a real dog, but she's also an amazing character that people sort of really fall for. So I think, I think characters are a really, really good tool. Snow clones we put in here and snow clones are actually a really simple concept. What they are, are cliches. So I'm just going to do it with random words. <laughs> there we go. Snow clones are just cliches where you substitute out a word so instead of there's gold in them there are hills the the word it's using is liturgical dance so it's filling it in there there's gold in them there are liturgical dance so we can change that we can put our own words and we can do beer and cupcakes and cigarettes i don't know this sounds like a good afternoon and i don't smoke um, <laughs> and there we go okay so we can do now you sort of get the feel from it that you can do. You can take the beer out of the cupcakes, but you can't take the cupcakes out of the beer. Who died and made you beer when beer attacked? And, you know, sometimes they don't make any sense. And that's absolutely fine because they are like randomly generated. But sometimes you will find the perfect slogan, like to beer is human. Like, that's great. I think the, the real phrase is to air is human, but to put to beer is human. Like, that's amazing. That's a t-shirt slogan right there. I can see that. And I think if you put that on a shirt and you have like beer on it and maybe someone thinking like the human, like the thinker or something like that, I, I think people will be copying your shirt. That will be like a really popular one. So you can use snow clones to generate all kinds of these, these funny slogans. And you can really experiment with it. And you can keep loading in random words as well. So like home economics and travel agents and not your daddy's home economics, home economics for Jesus. Like you can, you can really have fun with this substituting things in. And again, remember, I mean, this, this is all creative prompts. So you don't have to go with anything that you get from tangent. You can, if it, if it sends you in another direction, that's totally fine. As long as you end up creating something like I do think you should end up creating something from this. And of course, you can click on the words that it's given you to go explore them in the Tangent Explorer. So if you look up home economics, you can actually go and see like, okay, I want to make a book about home economics. Has anyone done one on CreateSpace? So we're, we just clicked Amazon CreateSpace and we can see if anyone's made books about home economics. They have. Look at that. This lady has made a book called Home Economics, Household and Personal Management Skills. So this lets you really go through the process of okay that sounds like an idea that's interesting and then you can immediately click on the tangent explorer and go see if there are any products that match that so you can see okay are there any books are there any t-shirts are there and and you can go and see what's on other print on demand sites as well so you can really go crazy exploring with this so that's the niche machine and we also have inspire as well and if you click on inspire, what it does is it picks out two different niches. And what you can do, in, and this is kind of like an Edward de Bono exercise. And, and his whole thing with creativity and lateral thinking. Now, Edward de Bono is the guy that pretty much invented lateral thinking as a concept. And his whole thing was intersecting two different ideas. And the niche machine has this inspire feature, which gives you two niches. So you can really kind of put those together and come up with your own ideas for them. So it's given us the color cadet blue and drinking the Kool-Aid. So I don't know, maybe you could do something about a blue cult, like all the people in it, like a, a blue. Oh, so I think maybe like Smurfs and I'm thinking Christmas and I'm thinking sort of Santa's elves and what if they were in a cult and what if they drank the Kool-Aid and like it, let yourself kind of go on this little adventure of what would happen if you put those two things together the color blue and drinking the Kool-Aid what does that make you think about it may take you in a political direction like oh this person the the other party are drinking the Kool-Aid hmm okay so like how could you use that and then what if you take the color blue I know blue has certain political terms like you can really explore these ideas. I'll do another one as well. I'll hit inspire again. And hopefully will that generate another one? Yeah, there it goes. And there's actually a video here. 
called The Art of the Intersect, which is a video from our Create course. So if you're stuck for how to do these intersects, you can go and watch that video. And it's me just talking about how to come up with different intersects. And so this is an interesting one. Look, look at this one, wine glasses and a mechanical pencil. Hmm, like that's, whoa. I, I wonder if anyone's done like a glass that you can draw with or a glass that, I don't know, that, that makes me think. I, I don't know, what if you drew with wine? Oh my gosh, what if there was wine art? Like, is that a thing? Could you draw with red wine? I don't even know if that would work. Or you can make it look like you did. Some ideas there. What if you had pencils that you could drink out of? Or what if they were like giant pencils that you could drink from? Like, I don't know, it, it gives you new ideas for products, like novelty things that might catch someone's attention. And that's what we're doing, is trying to come up with new ideas, new products. So that's the niche machine. These are a bunch of different features that are in the niche machine. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is the new Tangent Explorer dashboard. And this is pretty awesome because it does everything that the Tangent Explorer pop-up does but it also has Search Blast in it. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull the Tangent out of my screen there. So now you should be seeing the Tangent Explorer page and you should see my search history over there. Yeah, it looks like I'm in the right place. And now what you can do here, so this is really, really cool. Let's say we want to search for Christmas and we want to find some art ideas to come up with for Christmas cards. Let's say we want to put some, we want to make some new Christmas cards. What we can do is go to public domain and let's look for government images and see if we can find any public domain government images that are about Christmas. Now we can look at these individually. So we've got the National Oceanographic, I can never say it, it's like the Oceans and Atmospherics Department. We've got Department of Defense, we've got NASA, I think NASA's in there, yeah, there's NASA. National Archives, Library of Congress. This is what's really cool. If you go to the Tangent Explorer page, you can search them all at once because Isaac put the Search Blast feature onto all of these things. So what Search Blast does is it searches everything in a category all at once. So it takes a few moments, and as I say, I'm running Zoom on my computer, which does tend to slow it down a little bit. So you've got to give it a moment or two, but there we go, it's already starting to come up. So first of all, it does a Google check, uh, and these are images that are coming from .gov or .mil sites. So that's military or government sites. Now, I'm not saying these are definitely public domain, but they, they are on a government site. So there's a very strong possibility that they are public domain. So what you can do is then just click on the image. In fact, what I tend to do is hover to see what site it's coming from. So, for example, house.gov is actually coming from the House of Representatives. So there's actually a pretty good chance that that is a public domain image. So we can go visit and then you can go and read the information about that image, read the fine print and see whether that is an image that you want to use. That's interesting. That's actually redirecting to the History Channel. So I probably would not use that because that probably is not in the public domain. It's actually from a third party but it gives you some ideas. So Google's not the best one. Now let's take a look at the National Oceanographic site or whatever it is. Oh my God, the ocean site. I'm just gonna call it the ocean site. And what is really cool is that I, I know that there's, I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty certain these are public domain. And look at this, they have like little underwater sea creatures that look like Christmas trees. Oh my gosh. Let's see, let's see what this looks like. There it is, Oh, So these are really cute. They have like these little, like underwater things that look like Christmas trees. So I bet you could maybe, in fact, these ones are better. Maybe you could sort of colorize these and put them on a Christmas card or like framed on a Christmas card and sell it for sort of people who are marine biologists. We have a lot of them here because we have the La Jolla Institute down by the beach. But I could totally see this. Like you could, you could maybe Photoshop some little Christmas ornaments and stars on and be like, Happy Christmas to oceanog oceanographers. That's like the hardest word ever. 
Now, here's another thing, U.S. Department of Defense. Now, one thing to be careful with the Department of Defense is that you can't use military logos or insignias. You have to be very careful about that. You can't do anything that implies that you are part of the military or you're representing the military. And you have to be careful with recognizable pictures of people. But like, look at this. This is pretty cool. I see a picture of Santa with the troops here. And I think you might be able to get away with that because I don't think those are recognizable images. And this is published by the Department of Defense. So it should, as far as I understand it, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I understand it, that should actually be an acceptable image to use on a Christmas card or in a piece of art or on something that maybe you're doing for Amazon custom. So we're looking at Department of Defense. There's also NASA. They might have a Christmas image. Those aren't very Christmassy. It also searches the National Archives. And the National Archives, you can find some really fun old things. Like, let's have a look at this. What, what is in the National Archives for Christmas? Oh my gosh, check that out. A Merry Christmas, peace, your gift to the nation. That looks possibly racist. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that's, that's a pretty interesting one. And you can actually go, like, once, once you've found a, a site like this, the reason I went back is I want to look at this one. This looks cute. I haven't looked at these. This is all very sort of just we're exploring and seeing what we can find. Let's spend Christmas and New Year's this way and not in a hospital. Safety rules. Okay, so that's like creepy Santa. Wow. From 1945. And here's the great thing, like once you find something like this, you can go and browse around, like you can go to war posters and, and maybe you can find some other images like this. So this really gets you sort of browsing for different pictures. You've got Library of Congress here, which has a huge archive of images. All we did here was I put Christmas in the Tangent Explorer page and I did a search blast on all the government sites. Now, that's kind of obscure. Let's try doing vectors. Let's just see what Christmas vectors we can come up with, which probably will be a bit more popular. They might be probably images that are more usable for your t-shirts or for your book covers. Okay, so they're loading up. We've got Google first. So Google's just going to give us, and because this is a very general search, like we're just searching Christmas. So all kinds of things are going to come up. I would recommend probably not searching Christmas, but getting a little bit more specific, like Hawaiian Christmas or Russian Christmas or I don't know, what did we have? Gay Christmas? Like it might be better to sort of go with something a little bit more specific, but we're still going to get a bunch of ideas just from browsing these. And these should all be public domain. I mean, always double check, always double check. I don't guarantee anything is public domain, but they are from sites which claim that their images are public domain. So always double check, but these look pretty awesome. Where's this? This is from Open Clip Art Vectors. I love that. That would be a super cute greetings card to put that on. This is awesome a wallpaper that you could use. You could put this, like you can put this as a background on a t-shirt. You could use this in your gift wrap and then maybe add something else to it. Like all kinds of ideas here. There's this image from Pixeline, And these, as I say, they should all be public domain art, but double check before you use it. But there's some pretty cool ideas here. This is gorgeous. The wise men there. So lots and lots of ideas. It checks Noun Project. And you know, I've been using Noun Project a lot. I've been using Noun Project for so many of my own t-shirts and, and for books as well. I love it for journals. And I think in the 365 project, I, I think... I may have referenced Noun Project in there. But this is so awesome. Like, look at all the Christmas pictures that you have on Noun Project. And you can sort of browse through all these different ones. And what I love with Noun Project is they collect them all up and make these collections of sort of themed images. So if you find an artist's style that you really like, you can go and look at their whole collection and use all their images. So that's really cool, Noun Project. It also checks public domain vectors, find some images there, Christmas clip art, loads of simple clip art images there. And it, it checks some others, free pick, freebies gallery, and Christmas clip art, open clip art. So it searches a whole bunch of different art sites. So you can really go and find 
images for any particular topic. And I mean, you could, you, we, we've been looking at Christmas. I mean, we could do Hawaii and do a search blast on Hawaii. And I like, let's see what kind of vectors come up for Hawaii. So this is great. I mean, if you're trying to come up with any kind of product, whether it's wallpaper or gift wrap or whatever, just type the subject into Tangent and you'll probably find everything you need like very, very quickly in Tangent. So we did Hawaii vector. And look, here's some gorgeous sort of little motifs we can use on our shirts or on a book. Like this would be really cute in a book. That's from Pixabay, the pineapple. But there's Pixabay. You've got a little Hawaiian penguin. I know Marilyn's used those penguins. She has a penguin coloring book. Here's Nam Project. I'm, I want to see what Nam Project brings up for Hawaii. And of course, you can intersect the two things. Like if you find some cute pictures for Christmas, like a cute icon of a Christmas tree, and then you find a cute icon that represents Hawaii, maybe you can put those together on a shirt. So yeah, there we go. So, oh, like flip-flops. That's like the, the Hawaiian thing. I always see a lot of people with their cars and they have bumper stickers with the flip-flops. You could maybe do, how would you do Christmassy flip-flops? Maybe you could put bells on them. Or maybe what you could do, oh, I've got it. You could do flip-flops and then like Santa boots and you could have the footprints. And maybe, so you're not sure whether it's sand or snow because there's like flip-flops going one way and Santa boots going another. Then you could do Happy Christmas from Hawaii. So that's sort of how you can sort of brainstorm an idea from this. Some really fun icons there. But you can also go to tools. And so if you wanted to go to tools and do Christmas, let's do reindeer. I think reindeer is a good one. In fact, I've searched for reindeer before. So I can just click it and reindeer comes back up. So this actually has a history of all the things we've been looking at recently. And the search blast works the same for tools. So we can go search blast on tools and it gives us like everything we could need about reindeer. So this didn't find any, this is wiki rhymer is the first one that comes up. So it says there's no pure rhymes for reindeer, but there's lots of end rhymes. So you could do like rain beer, rain gear. Oh, oh, so you could like come up, like this gives you some sort of like t-shirt ideas right from the start. So instead of reindeer, if you're like a gearhead because you drive cars, you could have like rain gear or rain beer. Like rain beer, oh my gosh, all you need is a, like a picture of a bottle of beer and stick some antlers on it and go, I'm here with my rain beer. I'm coming up with these off the top of my head. You can totally sort of build on these ideas and come up with something better. But I mean, just by finding rhymes, it gives you a whole bunch of ideas. You've also got, this also gives you pun generator, which we looked at before. I think it's struggling to find any puns for reindeer. <laughs> we could try deer and see if it gives you any puns. Sometimes with pun generator, it works a lot better with simple words. If you give it like a, a three syllable word or a two syllable word, and sometimes it gets a little bit obscure. Oh, a leap deer. Instead of a leap year, you could have a leap deer. The seven deer itch. Deer and skittles. Oh my gosh, because there's like beer and skittles. So you could have reindeer and skittles. I guess that skittles is a trademark. But if you're not doing it on merch, you might be okay. Fiscal deer, new deer's eve. You can, you can see what it's doing here. Root deer. Instead of root beer, you could have a root deer. So if you were looking for just a new idea for reindeer shirts, because there are seriously so many reindeer shirts, but they all tend to be sort of copycats of each other. If you want a new idea, idea, ah, ah, see what I did there? If you want a new idea for your t-shirt, you can totally use Pun Generator and maybe team it up with an art search as well. It does a whole bunch of other things. It generates random acronyms a list of phrases containing the word reindeer. It comes up with, <laughs> this is so funny, acrostics. It gives you like a, a randomly generated uh, poem about your word. There's also Urban Dictionary, which I'm always a little iffy about because sometimes Urban Dictionary comes up with some very offensive terms. And it also does Urban Thesaurus as well. And again, Urban Thesaurus, if you are... If, if, if you are very delicate, then don't look at Urban Thesaurus and Urban Dictionary. You do not need to look at those. If you're very open-minded and you're not very easily offended, they can be a good source of ideas and shirts and just things you can use on print-on-demand. Some of them may not be appropriate for merch. Keep it very child-friendly for merch. But you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm just doing different search blasts using different categories to search for things. 
the other thing you can do with this, and I'm going to close these windows again, I'm going to keep the reindeer search and we can actually go and search for products. So if I go to products with the search reindeer, I can actually do a search blast on print on demand. Let's do print on demand and see all the different products that you can buy from various print on demand sites that are about reindeers. So this covers Redbubble, Zazzle, Cafe Press, Society Six, Spoonflower. I love Spoonflower. Oh my gosh. I think Spoonflower is very underutilized. I know you're, most of you are in Curate. So there is a video about wallpaper and greetings, uh, sorry, gift wrap. And I show Spoonflower in that. So if you haven't watched that video, it might be worth checking out because you can probably have some really good Christmassy ideas. And I think you would probably be able to ship them to Amazon Custom. So you could probably create maybe even custom wallpaper or gift wrap. Like you could offer to put someone's name on it. You could say, I'll personalize it with your name. And you could put that on Amazon Custom. So lots of ideas there. But here we go. Let's, let's take a look at some of the print-on-demand sites that are popping up. And this will just show us some of the products with reindeers on. So this is Cow Cow. And people here made reindeer swimsuits, phone cases, a hip flask. Oh, and I got to share something with you guys that made me laugh so much. I was looking at Urban Thesaurus for Christmas ideas. And one of the first suggestions it gave me was Christmas Pornament. And I thought that was hilarious. So if, if you're in the sexual wellness class, you might like to make Christmas ornaments this year. And actually, there's a lot of sites where you can get custom Christmas ornaments made. But that made me laugh just for the name. <laughs> so there we go. I'm looking at Cow Cow. And this gives you a whole bunch of things people have done with reindeers, different products they're selling. You can go through Spoonflower. I was just talking about Spoonflower. These are the reindeer, oh my gosh, is that the cutest design or what? I think my problem is spoon flat. It makes me want to go shopping because people do such gorgeous things with it. But these are some of the patterns people have created with reindeers. And I think this can really give you some ideas for different art styles because I find that spoon flower is so good. The art styles on spoon flower are so good that it can really give you ideas for if you're learning to design yourself. And I know in, in, in the T-shirt revolutionaries class, Isaac put together a whole Photoshop course. So T-Shirt Revolutionaries actually includes an entire like four or five hour Photoshop course that walks, that can pretty much take you from complete beginner to being a pro. So if that's something you're doing, and I know a lot of you that are in Curate are also doing the Photoshop course in T-Shirt Revolutionaries, this would be a really great place just to go to get more ideas on different types of art you can do. And there's a great idea just doing outlines on a plaid background. Like super, super simple ideas there. So yeah, that's Spoonflower. You can also see what's on Zazzle, all the different things people are doing on Zazzle, all the things people are doing with Redbubble. And all we did here, we just put in the word reindeer in the Tangent Explorer page, and we went to view all the print-on-demand sites. You can do the same thing. If you're just interested in T-shirts, you can actually do a search blast just on T-shirts. You can also do it on books. You can do a search blast just on books. And it, it doesn't just search Amazon, it searches Amazon, Barnes & Noble, checks for public domain poetry, Create Space, Project Gutenberg. Like, it gives you so many options. So this is, like Isaac calls this the command center. He's like, he uses, he's just lives in this page. Because you really feel like you have so much power here to just explore anything. Like you can put any topic in here. It can be something you found from the niche machine. And what you can do is you can open a second window. So you're browsing the niche machine in one window and you're bringing ideas from the niche machine into the Explorer page. Or you could have tangent words open in another window and again, be bringing in your ideas. So you could have two like windows or, or tabs open and go back and forth between them. So you can find an idea, explore the idea. And this really, like, it's, it's kind of up to you to find your process. I like to brainstorm first. I like to sort of gather random ideas and just really come up with different ideas. Then I like to go a bit deeper, exploring them, generating sort of more specific ideas. So like we came up with reindeer, then we realized, okay, reindeer rhymes with beer, kind of, or deer rhymes with beer. So then that gives us a more specific idea. Like, okay, I want to do a shirt about a reindeer beer intersect. And then the next step is to start looking for artwork so then you'd go to public domain and art and you can start browsing for sort of public domain pictures of reindeers or public domain pictures of 
beer and then you can sort of put those together on your shirt so it really kind of helps you solidify you start off with the sort of brainstorming with the wide open ah what ideas can i come up with and then you can sort of narrow your ideas solidify your ideas and then go and find the artwork and any extra content that you need for them so it really helps you with the whole process and then the next thing we have in here is sky palettes. So let me just close these again. Actually, what I'm going to do, let's grab a nice image. Let's see what we can do. Actually, we could go to Fine Art America. Oh, did they come up with any? Oh, there's some nice things in. Poor Santa. What happened to Santa? The rabbit jacked his sleigh. I'm getting distracted. Okay, let's close these down. I do want to get a picture of a reindeer. So let's go to Google Images and pick a nice picture of a reindeer. For this, it doesn't matter if it's public domain. I just want to find a nice picture of a reindeer that looks nice and Christmassy. There we go. This is a good one. So I'm going to take this picture. I am going to drag this and save this. And we're going to use this in a moment. Oh, <laughs> Deb says, I love it. Andrew says, fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. I'm really glad that you are enjoying this. Okay. So now what I was going to do, I was going to look at the sky palette. Now, if you've used sky tools before with Curate or Blue Sky, it's similar. We've added more functionality to it, though. So what I'm going to do is just bring in this lovely picture of Santa and a reindeer. And the first thing it does is it generates a color palette. And what I love with this is, especially if you're doing journals, and you're not really sure how to do the design, if you find a picture, so let's imagine we, we got this picture created by a designer for us, and this is the picture we're gonna use on our journal cover. We can actually come up with a whole color palette, and we can use these colors inside the journal or outside the journal or on the cover. If maybe you're coming up with a bundle idea, and you want to put it in a box that's the right color that matches your concept, or you're doing a subscription box, you can use this to generate the color that you want to use for your box. So what it does is it's color matching this image. And you can put any image in there and it will find the dominant colors in that image. And it even gives you the crayon colors. So you can do really clever things with this. You can bring in fine art. So like, let's say you put in Starry Night into the sky palette. It will give you the colors of Starry Night. And if you wanted to, you could probably sell a pack of crayons that you could use to color Starry Night. You could sell embroidery threads, that like you could create a bundle of embroidery threads in the correct colors, and it gives you the Pantone colors, it gives you the hex, the RGB colors, it gives you everything you need that you could recreate those, the colors from fine art. And what's really cool is that you can actually pull these hex numbers out and use those in Canva. You can paste those into Canva, you can paste them into Photoshop, and it gives you the colors that you need for your image. So that's the sky palette, which is really cool. And it does save your palettes as well, which is really nice. So it actually saves old palettes that you've looked at. And in fact, look, I was testing it with some of these fine art pictures. So you can kind of see what it does. It, it really pulls these, these really nice colors from there. Oh, there we go, you can see how it works here. So in this picture, it's looked at the, the image and it runs image recognition. So it says, okay, this is flowers, it's a painting, the sky, it's nature, it's field, wildflowers. And you know, I wouldn't have come up with the word wildflowers. If I was looking at this picture, I might have said roses or poppies. I probably wouldn't have used the word wildflower. But that's like a great word to use to describe it. And it will do this with any image. And it, it's, it's so funny, it can recognize famous people and it, and it will tell you some information about them. Um, like I don't know if I've got it in my palette. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, there was some controversy about Melania and whether this lady was actually Melania Trump. And so to test it, I put in a picture of the real Melania that we know for sure is the real Melania Trump. And it recognized her. It said it's Melania Trump, first lady of the United States, first lady, mm. family of Donald Trump, fashion beauty. It even says Vera Wang. Like, I'm not sure if she is wearing Vera Wang, but that would be pretty impressive if it, it noticed that. Elegant ceremony sequence. And it gives you all of these suggestions. So that would be really, really good if you were sort of using, if you were putting this in a book or something like that. 
It also tells you where else you can find this image. So you can see what news stories it's appeared in, where like, and, and from the point of view of you selling t-shirts or books, if you run a picture through here, you can see whether that picture has been copycatted, whether it's been used on other websites. Like it really gives you some strong insights so you can find out more about that image. And it finds similar images and suggests similar images, which can be really useful in a whole bunch of ways. And then what made me laugh was that I tried the second image of the supposedly fake Melania. And this isn't a political thing, like this is just a funny thing. I tried the supposedly fake version and it didn't recognize her. It didn't come up with her name and none of the similar images showed her. So I thought that was really quite fascinating that maybe like Tangent and Sky Palette could be at the heart of uncovering whether or not this lady is actually Melania. <laughs> Snope said it is, so I, I don't know. <laughs> so the, uh, the last thing in Tangent is the formulizer. And I'm not going to go into that in too much detail right now. If you have taken the Magic Formulas course, and actually Tangent, if you sign up to Tangent for the year, you get Magic Formulas with Tangent. So it's really, like, it's a really, really good deal. And what Magic Formulas is about is putting together structures and frameworks to build a brand. So if you think about something like Weight Watchers, at the core of Weight Watchers, they really have this concept of gamifying the process of losing weight, that you get points with certain foods. Like when you eat certain, po certain foods, you get certain points. And then there's a whole structure to the way they have support, support groups and so on. And all of this is kind of the, the heart of magic formulas. So what we did here was come up with different magic formulas you can use to gamify certain activities. So for example, down here you have a list of everyday activities like eating, driving, bathing, babysitting, cleaning house. Let's get cleaning house. And then it gives you a ways to gamify that. So, I mean, what if you, your product was a book about cleaning house, you could create a system where it's a murder mystery. Oh, this is genius. So it's a game, right? And what it, what it is, as a mom with three kids, I could maybe hide clues around the house and the children have to clean up the room to find the clue to solve the murder mystery. That's an amazing concept. So this is a game. Perhaps you could gamify that. You could turn it into a board game. You could turn it into a book. You could have printable worksheets. Like you could, or you could maybe make a chart. So you could have, oh, that's how you could do it. You could have a chart that you hang on the wall. So the kids come in and then they clear up the room. They find the murder weapon and they write it down and you, you sell it all in a box. And it's called basically murder in your house. Boom, there's a product. And that's really how the formulizer works. So it gives you an event. So you have everyday activities, life transitions, seasonal events, and then you can go to the categories. So it's game mechanics, perspectives, system structures, creativity unblockers, and it really makes you generate a whole concept, like a whole, you, you can create a whole brand from the formulizer. You can also use it to come up with t-shirt ideas. Like I, I find looking at things like system structures, you could do days of the week. Okay, so what if you did, let's do maybe a life transition. What if you had like divorcing on days of the week? So you could be like a Monday divorce is this. Oh, so you know like the, the Monday's child is fair of face and Tuesday's child is, I don't know, had something about grace and good and grace and things. What you could do is maybe make, or you could do this as a book and you could have like, or, or maybe like an art maybe maybe like an art frame or a picture and you could have like what happens if you divorce on different days of the week so you could have like monday's divorce is full of woe and tuesday's divorce has far to go and like you could kind of do a spin on that so i mean this this is just how you use this for brainstorming and i i really like system structures as a way of brainstorming sort of t-shirts as well so yeah, I, I kind of, I hope this was useful. Oh, you can also do conjure a formula. Oh, how funny, it picked divorcing. It did divorcing as a floor plan. Cleaning house, reward badges and awards. Boom, there's a product idea there. I mean, you can do stickers or badges for kids for cleaning house, or you could do a chart 
where they can put stickers for cleaning house. So it gives you a whole bunch of ideas there. So yeah, we would love for you to join us in town, Jen. You also get magic formulas, which is three classes. It was like three full length classes on building your own brand and just like magic formulas is so cool. It's really, really cool. It gives you a lot of tools to think with, to structure your ideas, to structure your products and to explain your products. So it's a really, really good course as well. So if you do join Tangent for the year, you get that. You can also join Tangent monthly as well. So I hope that was super helpful for you. There's a lot more in Tangent. We have a whole resources section that has all kinds of places you can go to research trends or ideas. Like there's literally hundreds of links in there. So it's a big, powerful system. I hope it helped you. I hope it gave you a lot of Christmassy ideas. Maybe you're going to make cards. Maybe you're going to make wallpaper or gift wrap or t-shirts or books. Whatever you're going to make, you've still got time. And I hope you have a super awesome Q4. Thank you for joining me, guys. I will leave the replay up so you can keep enjoying this. But I hope that was fun and I hope it was useful for you. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.